This is a talk given by Sidney Banks. A deeper appreciation of what he is saying can be obtained by listening to this tape many times. The game of life is played with a free will and a free mind, and it all stems from a divine consciousness from God, from what we call God. And what God is, is the energy of all things. I mean all things. And the idea, psychologically, to explain the game of life, is to let people realize if you drop your ego, your image of self-importance, and simply be you, just you, whoever you are, you'll find the secret to heaven here and there. Now, we all have what is called a free will and a free mind. Each living soul has a free will and a free mind. And this free will and free mind, nobody but nobody can take it from you. It is yours. But it's, there's a little trick to this free will and free mind. Because this free will and free mind is what holds you prisoner. It's what keeps you in hell. It's what keeps you in ignorance. Because you have <coughs> chosen to use your free, own free will in this game of life, this illusion, instead of submitting this so-called free will to the will of God. Because the will of God, in actual fact, is the only will that exists. The only reason the free will and the free mind exists is because this is how we play the game, the game of life, via our mind. And it is our mind that won't let us see the secret. The secret that we are all stem from divine consciousness, and we are one divine thought. The entire universe is one divine thought. And within that divine thought, there are millions and millions of levels of consciousness. And the higher you are towards your divine state, to this happiness, to this understanding, the less the mind interferes with life. Because it is this mind with beliefs that create all the problems in the world. Beliefs beliefs from the mind. And this is what we've been learning to do. Is dropping ego, in turn, is dropping beliefs, in turn, is dropping anger, in turn, is dropping ignorance, in turn, is dropping sickness, so on and so forth. It is the absolute supreme secret to all problems in the universe, is by raising your level of consciousness. Not any more information. We have loads of it. We have information to burn. Information from the mind, from the intellectual mind, cannot solve the problem. You must go beyond the mind of man to the universal mind. And this is what we are doing. It's trying to explain the game of life so that you'll have a glimmer to the universal mind that which we call the God conscious mind. The first glimmer of this mind is truly the magnificent journey that everybody in the world seeks. It lets you see religion. It lets you see all religions is one. It lets you realize the simplicity of life. It lets you realize that you're not who you think you are. You're something nicer, far better, really nice. Because if you take the mind away, all that's left, God, conscious mind, which is God. I'm not saying everybody will reach the state. Don't even search for that state. Just know it exists. This is the main thing. Once you start on your journey, which you're doing now, my advice is give it up. Because while you're still searching, you're saying you haven't got it. And I'm telling you right now, you do have it. 
everybody's got it. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have it. Everything is one supreme mind. And we all stem from this supreme mind. Everything is a conscious state. Totally everything. All the universe you see is a conscious state. It's an illusion. It's non-existent. It is only existent to the mind. To find the secret to happiness, you've got to start to believe this. Once you start to believe it, you've got to go further than believe it. You've got to know it for a fact. And that's what the world is. A bunch of little facts. Really. A bunch of little facts. You can describe the entire world and all its secrets with a bunch of little facts. But those little facts are so devastating it would take thousands of years to explain a simple little fact. All you can do is just keep talking. Every living soul on earth hears truth when it is spoken. This is why throughout the centuries and since the beginning of time, everybody has been attracted to religion of one sort or another because somewhere every living soul knows that they are God that they are from the divine creator. They know that because everything is one. Everything is one because everything is God. Ignore the person that's talking. Look at the facts and just listen to the facts. This is the secret to finding everything you've ever looked for. It's in the Bible. It'd be known Bible to man. It's in books all over the place from prophets, it's from educators. You'll see purest of truth written in a grocery store. You'll hear the grocery clerk speaking the purest of truth. If you heard her, you, you'd be eternally happy. But we don't hear it. But we all go around all the time telling each other who we are, what we are, how happy we are, how stuck we are, and we go on and on. We tell each other all the time the secret to our own problems. And now, to see this, the most delightful way is to see it in a funny way. If you try and find it through negativity, you'll never find it. If you try and find it through sadness, you'll never find it. If you find it, try and find it through seriousness, you'll never find it. You've got to find it through happiness. Because that's what you're searching for. And unless you're willing to accept happiness, you, you can't possibly accept your divine inner being. Because your divine inner being is the creator of the happiness. Once all the negativity is gone. Uh, it's really funny, a lot of people condemn us because we laugh. Yeah. They'll say, uh, oh, they're always laughing. They don't take it too serious. But you should never take it serious. Because with this understanding, it takes all the seriousness out. Seriousness is just a little game to play in life. To keep us the way we are. Right? In hell most of the time. Never take anything too serious. Understand it, and the seriousness will drop. If you can take this into your own work, now even your own business, where... Of course, you've got to make a profit for your business. That's common sense. But if you don't take it serious and do the same things, you'll make the same money. As a matter of fact, it's far, far better because you're having a good time doing it. You've got to take out the seriousness. And you say, well, how can I take out the seriousness when, and you've got a million reasons why you shouldn't be happy. <coughs> With this knowledge that we're talking now, all you have to see is one little fact, one thing, and all of a sudden that seriousness will drop because your reality will change for the simple reason your level of consciousness has risen. And this is the secret to life, is to raise the level of consciousness. It's the only way that the world will ever, ever, ever solve its problems with marriage, the problems with starving children, the problems in schools, the problems in society, totally all over. 
This is the way to give up. It's the way to unpollute the universe, not only from the pollution outside, but from the pollution inside our heads from the wrong level of conscious state, from a low-level ignorant conscious state. That's the pollution, not outside. It's the inside that creates the outside. Eh? So it's our minds, our free will, that has created the mess the world is in today. The only way you can fix it is get your mind healthy, clean, understanding, and then the world outside will change. That's why anybody that tries to change the world, it has to be a fall. There is no way. There is really no way. There is no way in the world can you change the outside world. You can only change yourself. Then when you change yourself, the world outside will change. You will see it different, entirely different, from another level of consciousness. And when this level is seen, then you will spread it simply by being here on earth. And this is why the level of consciousness is the only way to fix all our problems. The mind, like everything, is the illusion, eh? And we keep forgetting it. There's a mind of man with his free will. We've got this universal mind, this mind of God. Now remember, don't think of God as you think probably in the past. Try and take another look at this thing called God, eh? Whatever you think God is, just try and put it aside for a while. Whether it's a man in a big, well, a big beard, or whether it's a, a round object, or a flat object, or, or it's a he or a she, just try and forget what your past concepts of God is. Eh? And just realize everything, and everything, where there's no beginning and there's no end, there's just everything, is God. Eh? Now, this everything is the energy of all things. It is nothing. Yeah? It is nothing. That's God. Nothing. The great nothingness. See, because we have to put a name on it, we put a name God. But when we put a name God on it, we see a second object. So take the second object off. Every time you hear the word God, take the second object off and just think of the space. There's nothing. And from this great nothingness, all things appear via our conscious mind our thought, conscious mind, everything comes to pass via our thought, conscious mind. This is the direct link between God and man. And this is why this hidden link, this missing link, is what mankind has set since the beginning of time for, the missing link. And the missing link yeah? they take it to be something material to explain the wonders of mankind at the beginning and etc. This isn't so. It really isn't so. The missing link is a conscious state. It's a God's conscious state that lies within each and every one of us. This is the missing link <coughs> from the front to the back, from the inside to the outside, from the top to the bottom, the missing link is in between. And this missing link, as I said, is a conscious state. So as the conscious state unfolds and people hear, they too go towards the same conscious state. They find the missing link. And when you find the missing link, you'll see the fallacy behind what you say religion is. Religion, you really can't put a name on it. Because if you say you're a Catholic, you're not religious. If you say you're a Protestant, you're not religious. If you're a Jew, you're not religious. If you say you're any one definite thing, you've missed the point. Because you have taken a set of beliefs that my belief is better than your belief. And the belief turns out to be the religion. And a natural fact, truth, is the purest religion. It's 
simple truth, simple talk, the word. The secret is in the word. But the secret to be manifest into real life comes via the missing link. Now, each and every one of us has that power to find the missing link any time you want, any second you want. But it's not done too often because we get caught up in the game of life, in the illusion. It's really a, a beautiful thing when you're submitting to this. I know in the past if anybody had said God to me, I'd have said no way. And to me it didn't make sense. Of course it didn't make sense because I was thinking about it. I had beliefs of what God was and God wasn't. And there is no way that the human mind can possibly realize what God is or what he himself is. Not until he goes beyond his mind to truly realize God. But when he realizes God, he'll find that he and God are just one. All things are one. The living soul with this free will and free mind is just a the minutest part of the universe. So small, it can hardly be counted. But because all things are God, then he is God. You see, it's like saying, you take a teardrop. It really has no strength in it. It just falls. <clears throat> That's all. But if it fell into the Atlantic Ocean, then it's got the power of the Atlantic Ocean. Although that teardrop is just a minute part. But once it blends with the whole, it's a beautiful feeling. Because this is the, the energy source that shows you the fallacy of all your little insecure games, all your unhappiness, all your imaginary things, tells you all about your sickness. It's the cure-all of cure-alls. And it's just simple truth. And the beautiful thing about it is you don't have to do anything. You just have to listen. You see, if you try objects outside to try and find inside, then you're in the illusion trying to get out of it. So you've got to leave the outside object and go inside, because all truth lies inside. You go inside to where the illusion is created. And when you get in there to where the, the illusion is created, naturally you have all the little secrets of life. It's a beautiful way to find yourself. Realize how schizophrenic you are. Really, it's really funny, because... Uh, you might be laughing, somebody just handed you a hundred dollars, eh? and they're just saying, oh wow, hundred dollars, nothing, I'm really happy, eh? Then all of a sudden somebody says, I just dented your car. <laughs> then you're unhappy again. Same day, same you, but there's been two objects outside that created your happiness. One created it and one uncreated it, eh? <laughs> so you use both objects, whereas if you see that they're really just objects and you, you don't hang on to them, eh? Uh, then you're free of your holdings possessing you because your holdings really do possess you. Now, this doesn't mean to say that you're going to get all your holdings and throw them away. That, this, <coughs> this is what, this is what the, the cultural youth of a few years ago did. The, the Arcturus Society, eh? um, the Arcturus Society, and the, they thought it was outside. But it wasn't outside because they took it with them. You can't get away from it because you're you. You create your problems. So my advice is if you've got a nice home and it's comfortable and you, you're happy and you've got a good job, that's beautiful. That's what it's about. Because work has a lot to do with happiness. There is absolutely no doubt work has a lot to do with happiness. The more you find yourself, the more beautiful your work will become. And if you don't 
like the particular job you're in, you'd be surprised what might happen once you start to see truth. And psychologically, okay, that's where we're back to psychological. Notice the switch. Try and see the switch, and if you can see me switching from, from psychological to spiritual, this is beautiful, because if you can see me doing it, then you'll see the world doing it. And if you can see the world doing it, then the whole world is your workshop every day. And you learn every day of your life. It's as simple as that. Really simple. Really simple. Just look at the world every day. Be ordinary. Really ordinary. And I don't mean, I don't mean analyze the world. Before you start to look at the world at all, there is one thing you must do, is start looking at yourself. And I don't mean your outside self, this person that did all these rotten things and the ooh, wow, in the past and uh, the way you were brought up. Not that self. That self is the most innocent thing in, in God's world. It's a very silly, silly, stupid little thing. It walks around. It's so innocent. Just forget it. Huh? <laughs> Leave that alone. Go inside to where the creation of man is created. Find out how and what you are. Find out what you are. And how you find out what you are is you go to the spiritual laws. Uh, um, start looking at those spiritual laws and how you are responsible for you because you have this free will and free mind. Uh, uh, you've got to take this responsibility. And when you take it, it's a really amazing thing because the responsibility from inside clears you outside. It's, it's a really beautiful thing because you know that you are responsible for everything you do. Once you take this, you're free of responsibility. You see, it's only when we won't take the responsibility that we're afraid of the responsibility. See, once we accept who we are and take full responsibility, even for picking your body, yeah, even spiritually picking your body, because, you see, every living soul it's a divine consciousness which picks its body, its own body. Yeah. But I'm not saying you as a body. I'm saying you as a divine conscious state, which is God. So God picked your body, but because you are responsible for that container, you take the responsibility for it. And it doesn't matter what's wrong with you. See it as perfect. <laughs> Start looking at it as perfect, and it'll turn perfect. The only imperfections we ever see is the imperfections brought from the mind. Because if you take the mind away, all that's left is perfect. This is accepting God's will. Because we can't understand this thing called God's will, we bring our minds in and the game of life's on again. That's all. It's just a big game. It's a big stage show where we, we get all serious, about, uh, but even when we go to find ourselves, we say, I'm too serious. I'm far too serious. I've, I've, I've already had a nervous breakdown, and I feel I'm going to have another one. Right? So the first thing we do is we walk into a place, and uh, somebody's laughing, and they say, hey, I wish you would get serious, so that I could find out how serious I really am. Right? Instead of joining it. Uh, just join it. Let life Take it. There's a flow. There's a flow to life. It's a, it's an energy flow. It's uh, quite unexplainable, and it's uh, if you give the lesser to the greater, or submit yourself to God, the same thing, or accept a higher level of consciousness, the same thing. Not, those three things I've said the same thing. If you submit yourself, and just all of a sudden there's something happens, and it's called faith. And faith, you don't go around saying, I've got faith, that will happen. Really, a lot of faith. Really, really a lot of faith. <laughs> and really, that's not faith. Faith is, faith is when it's non-existent in your head. When it's, when it's an absolute fact. You just know. Even beyond your mind. It's just a, a, it just is. It's taking the God consciousness that's within 
and putting it to work. This is why when, when people have a sickness and they're supposedly going to die, and quite often it baffles the doctors that all of a sudden make an a, a unusual recovery. And they say, well, it's faith. And the person will say, I just knew I wasn't going to die. Or I just knew that sickness would go. It's just a, it's beyond belief. It's something that clicks without the mind even interfering. It's a feeling. It's a, it's a divine acceptance. From inside, we all play the perfect game, the game of life via a divine conscious state. The rules are all the same, it's just a game of life, that's it. But because of the cause and effect, and because we are all that one source, all one source, no matter who you are, you could be a Harvard University professor, or you could be in dark East Africa running ar around in a loincloth. You're still playing the very same game, the game of life. And with it, exactly the same desire, jealousy, hate, envy, greed, love, fear, insecurity, so on and so forth. Everybody, everybody on earth plays the same game. If you know your own game, you know the world's game. The more you know of your own game, the more you know of the world. This is why if you ever go beyond the mind of man to twig into this inner self, this inner mind, then you are beyond the mind of man and you have all this knowledge. The whole world doesn't know that because the whole world is still caught up in the outside psychology. Outside psychology is from the mind, which stems from the past, which is absolutely of no value in finding the secret to happiness for the simple reason it's the mind of man caught in the illusion of life. And it goes round in circles because this is what the game of life is. We must forget the past. There is absolutely nothing from the past can help you now. There is only one thing that can help you is seeing right now. Stop blaming the past for what you are. It's really a waste of time. Really, it's the biggest mm. waste of time in the world. It's the, it's the biggest con game of all. It's to blame the past for what you are. Because you, you live in a a world of beliefs from the past which are controlling you from a childhood. We're no longer children, we're grown-up people. But because we're grown-up people, we're full of a bunch of garbage. Absolute bunch of garbage in our head. Silly, petty, unbelievable, illusionary beliefs. To find out the truth, you've got to have a second chance. So you've got to become like children again. And this becoming like children is seen for the first time beyond your mind because you start to clear your head of all the beliefs. You become more and more beliefless and you become more and more factual because your silly beliefs have fallen away and now you can see what is instead of what isn't. You'll see the true reality of life and the true reality of life is really beautiful it really is to see the ignorance of others is really beautiful if you really see it but if you're just looking at it and condemning it and judging it then that's a hell of a place you're caught in the mind you've got to go past the judging really it's all it is, is dropping thought. That's all you have to do, is drop the thought of it. If you have a fight with your spouse, drop the thought of it. You say, well, I can't because I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> this is what we're trying to do, is tell me how the mind works to enable you 
to drop the thought of it. We just love to keep things going. Oh, we love a good fight. We love negativity all the way. We love it in television. We're always shooting each other and <laughs> having a ball and freaking each other out with uh, blazing infernos and uh, oh, the whole thing. And we just love it because we're so blind we love to to frighten ourselves. We, we actually live in fear. We really do. The entire world lives in a state of fear. It, it's like it's almost like a nightmare if you really see it, eh? But when you realize how it works, when you start to wake up and you start to realize that you're the creator of this, this illusion, this dream, then all of a sudden it changes to beauty because you're the creator of the feelings. You're the creator of the illusions. You start to submit yourself once again to this inner self. And it just, that's all it is. It's, it's no big thing. It's nothing you've got to remember. It's nothing you can study. It, there's no techniques. To give you a technique, it's just a farce, an absolute farce. A technique is saying it's outside again. It isn't. There's only one way. It's to go inside and find the truth. But there is no other way. There is only one way for the simple reason. Each individual soul must realize his own self. That's the only way. By a conscious state. There's always been one way, and there always will be just one way. Because everything is because it is. And is, is God. And what is, is God in motion. And if you accept what is, by dropping your free will, you're accepting God. Then you realize that you and God are one, and you've still got your free will and your free mind, but you've also got God. You've got the ocean to back up that little teardrop. Then you're free. But on the way up, life gets more beautiful because each level of consciousness. It's a, a level of consciousness is one step higher towards your divine being in sight. And with each step, information comes automatically to explain life clearer, to make it more positive. That's it. Every time, if you keep listening, and you really want to hear, you'll hear and you'll find your happiness. And once you find this happiness, you want to spread it to others. And when you go to try and spread it to others, you find out, once again, it doesn't make sense. Because people will say, pardon? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Or, well, of course, I've known that for years. Uh, I've read those things hundreds of times. They haven't read them. They've only looked at them. They haven't seen beyond the words. Because once you see beyond the word just once, from then on, you always see and hear truth and accept it. Because once truth is accepted, you, you'll never let it go. For the simple reason taken one step towards your inner self and that's your level of consciousness that's what that's what you deserve in life and it's so beautiful each step is, gets more and more beautiful because each step must drop negativity and all the bad feelings that go with it and each step and there's, it, there's no end to it don't ever think you're smart because really, there's nobody sitting in this room, including me, has the slightest clue of how life really, really works. It's so deep. You see, it's different talking about it and living it. Now, the living of truth 
is eternal for the simple reason there's no end to it. Because, you see, this thing called God is it's endless. It's, it has no beginning and it has no end. It just is. And everything inside this 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 isness is God. Eh? That's what the isness is. You could call God isness. Doesn't explain anything, eh? But it's the same thing. It's just a the clicking from the God outside to the God within. The God outside is the illusion. The God within is the reality. Because you go to the spiritual side to create the outside. The, the inside creates the outside. So therefore, outside and inside are God. But outside is the illusion, and inside is the reality. And you, if you take all your body away, and what's left is this space that has this information. Because, you see, you never go anywhere. You never die. You never go anywhere. <laughs> it's just an illusion. You only think you're going from here to there. And you only think you're going from airplane to wherever, eh? because it's, it's all just an illusion. It's all a trip. And if you can really start to see this, eh, magical things happen. Magical things happen. Because all of a sudden your life changes. All of a sudden your luck changes. Uh, all of a sudden your business changes. Everybody goes positive. Eh? Because if you have a positive outlook in life, life treats you the same. You see, all feelings come from within. If you create anger, it's only a feeling. It's really not real. It's not really not real. It's just a feeling that you have created blaming an outside object. Just a feeling. Yeah? Just a thought. It's the same with insecurity. Really, there is no such thing. Insecurity is just a feeling to create the feeling of insecurity. And the wise mind uses it wisely. It uses it to have the feeling of insecurity against its body being damaged. But the sick mind uses insecurity against itself because of its ignorance. It creates its own problems and creates the feeling of insecurity. Insecurity makes you prove yourself. And the second you go out into the world to prove you're tackling the entire world, and you'll never make it. You'll never succeed because there's no end to proving. You've got to give up proving and just be you. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. Just be you. And if you are you, and a positive life, then you'll be happy. Thank you for listening to this talk. We hope it has been helpful to you.